hey what is good youtube i am jaydeep and welcome back to the channel so thank you for the recent support on the channel we have not we are now almost at 750 subscribers to 250 more to go to reach the 1k mark and so if you're new to the channel do consider subscribing and hit the bell icon as well and without any delay let's get started with today's video so today's video is for people who want to read but absolutely hate reading an easy solution for you is to consume the content in an audiobook format now you can go and buy expensive audiobook subscription you can let python help you and you can build your own audiobook if you have a pdf of a book handy which is available then you can easily convert it into an audiobook using a few lines of python code so let's see how it's done uh, let's start with a quick architecture diagram so there are three steps in this project first is getting the pdf and preparing the chapter dictionary we'll look at it in a minute then using the uh, P uh, read pdf using pi pdf2 and generate the chapter text and then last is the order conversion using pi to pi text to speech uh, text to speech 3 i don't know why i've typed it as 2 but yeah so this is just a google text to speech api uh, and this is a python wrapper around the google text to speech api so there's nothing more and then we save each chapter in its own file now you can choose to save the entire thing in one large book but that doesn't make sense uh, it also doesn't give you any clarity that okay someone is reading out the entire book to you but you want to ideally you want to save each and every chapter in its own file so you can listen accordingly and you can have a flow and go back and forth yeah. so that's what we're going to do so i think uh, the architecture is pretty simple the library which you're going to use is pi pdf2 and pi text pi text to speech 3 let's get started with the first step so get the pdf legally okay this is important get it legally if you don't have if you don't have it if you get it illegally that's entirely your problem okay and then prepare the chapter dictionary so this is the important part and this is what i've done beforehand important part so what i've done is i've looked at this table of contents and the first introduction starts at first uh, the page number one but this one corresponds to 14 in our pdf because there are stuff there's additional stuff before this as well so let's go to the 15th uh the first introduction okay so what happens here it starts at 16 but the library which we're going to use by pdf2 this is zero indexed just like any other python array or python list or python code or any programming language this is zero indexed so the 16 becomes 15 introduction actually starts at the page number 15 and that is what we have done 15 and it stretches for eight more pages so the next chapter st starts at nine so it stretches for eight more pages so 15 plus 9 this is 24 okay the next chapter starts at 24 and then if you do 41 minus 9 that will give you the end index then 71 minus 31 that will give you the second chapter and stuff like that so this is how we have made the uh, chapter dictionary okay nothing fancy the name of the chapter which you want you can give it anything and the start and end index right so this is this is the uh this is the yeah so this is the part about chapter a generation of chapter dictionary right heading over to the second part which is reading of the pdf using python and for that as i mentioned we're going to use the popular library pi pdf2 so it can do much more than just reading pdfs there's a lot of functionality on offer but that is out of scope of this tutorial obviously and hence we're going to only refer to the reading part now uh, the code for reading i put it in the main okay i'm not going to write it because the tutorial becomes uh, the tutorial becomes really lengthy i've written it i've tested it and then i'm just going to paste it yeah and let me adjust the formatting uh not here but and i'll explain it to you in a minute because we have saved the pdf here itself uh you know the pdf so what we did is import pdf reader class from pi pdf2 and then initialize the pdf reader with the book name okay and then what we have done is uh, the in the last step as i mentioned the chapter dictionary is populated this has the name the chapter name page number which is a tuple okay i made it a tuple because the page number shouldn't change and hence we we pass in this reader object the chapter name the start page and the end page so this is just a simple iteration over a dictionary and get the chapter name and the page numbers and the starting and the page numbers are passed to this generate audiobook text so this is the first step it's very simple uh, there's actually not much the important stuff to, uh, the important stuff you might, which you might want to look at is this dictionary and reading of this dictionary so this tells you about this helps you learn about working with dictionaries as well and python tuples as well moving on to the second part which is the ex uh, so the extraction of pdf is done now we have to divide each and every text into a chapter right because we don't want the entire pdf book to be in a one single audio file so that's what we're go going to do now and the code for that is also pretty simple so here if you remember we generated the pdf reader object and now what we have done is we have passed the pdf reader object along with this dictionary to the generate audio text function 
Now what this function does, it, it takes in the reader object, the chapter name, the start page and the end page. Yeah? And then on the PDF object, there's a dot pages attribute where you give the page number and then on that you call the extract text method. So this will extract the actual text from the PDF. So if I just run this now, And if you see the entire text has been extracting fancy again is happening here this will tell you uh, th this will teach you about the range function as well now what the range function does is it gives in it, uh, it it takes in the starting index and the end index and that is the number of pages it, it will extract from this pdf reader object now for the range object the start page or the start index is included but the end page or end index is not included this also gives us the flexibility of using this end index as the uh, starting index as the end index here otherwise you'd have to do minus one from every everything now this is just basic math this is very very basic math uh, you know with a little bit of calculation you can get this if you don't want if you're too lazy just generate the pdf in in one sample file and i think that should work as well again also a word of caution or if you know on windows or any machine i think it, i think on windows at least i don't know about mac and linux uh, you can have you cannot have special characters in the a file name anywhere remember we are going to use this chapter name as the file name so that's why we have removed the uh, any special character so why teach financial literacy Ide ideally there should be a question mark here but we have removed that to uh, comply with the windows file naming convention otherwise the code will break 100 percent right coming back what we've done is we've used the range start page end page so end page is not included and then from that you, you are extracting the text and we are printing that text the next logical step is passing this text to convert it into audio. So this brings us very quickly towards the last and the final part of this tutorial that is okay it has a name as well somewhere it's hidden in black but yeah. Um, convert the text which we have read. So we have divided uh, our logic now consists of two things. First is reading of the pdf and then extracting the chapter texts. Okay and the last part which obviously remains is converting the audio to text and for that we are going to use our Py TTSX. So what it is called Python text to speech tree. And documentation of this is pretty handy as well. And uh, let's walk through a few different things. Okay. So not only can it just convert text to speech, you can also set the rate of the speech that how fast it speaks. You can set the volume as well. So if the volume is too low, you can set the volume as well. And the nice and interesting part, you can adjust the voice. So if you want to hear the book in the male voice, you can set this voice dot voices dot id is equal to zero and voices of one dot id so what happens is it sets the uh, voice to a female so you're going to use the male voice i think uh, it's not important what voice you generate it in its personal preference so you can do that but i wanted to show you that this all properties exist and the one which you are interested in this so if you're running it on windows you know uh, the uh, ffmpeg and uh, you don't have any installation i didn't do any separate installations but if you're running on linux it makes uh, you have to make sure that eSpeak and FFmpeg modules are installed. So that is the word of caution here. And the last is save to file the text which you're going to pass. This is the order text and this is the name of the file. So that's what exactly what we're doing in this function. And again, I've written that function because what happens is these tutorials become 50, 60 minutes. And again, as I mentioned, uh, it is a lot of time consuming. There's also no value add in saying me type the tutorials. Okay. Uh, the main important thing is to understand what is happening here. Right. So what we have done is we have given a call to convert audio again uh, in the main function we are extracting or we are reading the pdf here we are extracting each and every chapter as a text and then that text we are passing it to this function to convert that text uh, we are uh, passing the convert to audio te uh, convert to audio the text and the file name which you want it to be saved in and then using this code which is available easily we have led with that word documentation you can simply start an engine, initialize an engine, save to file is the method which we need to call or the function which you need to call, give it the text which you want to save and the file name. Again, this is where well. if, if your file name, uh, which is here, contains any special characters, let me actually minimize this, I should have done it long back, contains any special character, this will fail. Okay, so but it's very important that you don't have any special characters in your file name because that's just basic Windows mechanism, nothing, uh, nothing related to the library you don't have you not have special characters in the name other than underscore you can have an underscore i think that should work but question marks and stuff like that please make sure you remove them and then save to file text so text is basically each and every chapter run and wait this is the method which is needed to convert it and then engine dot stop so we're going to initialize an engine save it to save it to, uh, save the file run the save file mechanism and then stop it okay this is what we're going to do this is our third and last piece uh, third and last piece done 
a very very easy code and now we are going to I am going to open this and I am going to run it and hopefully it runs so we have printed the chapter name so introductions.mp3 is already populating lesson 1 is also populating this is nice now I will see you once the data is all populated and we will hear one recording all right that's a code entirely done and we have all the files here now i wish i can show you how the audio sounds like and so let me take the mic a little bit closer to the pc or the laptop and maybe we'll play the final thoughts or maybe one of the chapters chapter 5 lesson 592 i have been teaching professionally since 1984 it has been a great right so that was an audio sample i hope it's audible on the audible on the video as well but that's nice if you don't like the male voice obviously i showed you how to change it to female but you know that's about it so this is a pretty handy tutorial again uh, let's go back to the code i'll upload the code on the github uh, github but the problem is uh, you have to use your own pdf and the chapter dictionary again uh, this is just really really basic math there's not there's not much it took me two minutes to generate this but i don't i didn't want to type all this that's why i prepared it and you can use maybe any bet, better method than uh, i've just used a dictionary for because it's easy to show uh, python dictionaries uh, python tuples uh, the python range method and uh, how the for loops and everything work in python uh, the idea of this was not to uh, show the conversion but the idea was to show a dictionary manipulation uh, python functions and uh, the python range function python for loops and also some handy f strings in python print statement that was the whole idea of this tutorial actually if you just study loop, uh, if you study for loops if you study range function if you study dictionaries or tuples doesn't do much but if you build this project it will tell you how to work with uh, python uh, the python uh, dictionaries how to read dictionary how to read the dictionary if the dictionary has a tuple as a value how to extract them and stuff like that this is what this code is all about right. that is it for this video guys thank you for watching again if you're new to the channel do consider subscribing if you're an old viewer who is not subscribed please do that as well i see a lot of people are not subscribing for some reason i don't know hit the subscribe button costs you zero uh, does me a whole lot of good and keeps me motivated as well I've, i'll upload this architecture diagram the idea was not show you how this how to use these two libraries because that's a complaint i've seen people do that okay everything can be done in a done in the library uh, using libraries that's true you can write your own library if you don't like to use them but the idea was to show you python dictionaries python tuples how to how the for loop range function how the function calling and parameter passing works as well that is it for this tutorial thank you for watching